So having got these in tune, the next thing is to start playing in um, a pattern with the pads. Uh, so I could do it to a click. It's probably going to be a little bit more inspiring if I do it with a break. Um, so probably the most kind of well-known drum and bass break. So I'll just stick that onto the track. Turn off the loop. Um, give that a quick quantize. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that. Cool. All sounds a bit rough at the moment, obviously, but um, hopefully it will start to come together. So that was what I settled on. Um, obviously, we're kind of recreating it like this. You're not going to hear me messing around trying to find the right pattern. Um, inevitably, there's a fair bit of that when writing a tune. Um, but I'll just play that in, and then we can move that across the other, other pads as well. Okay, so just check that, give that a quantize. Okay, so we can try building up that pad then. That one's still not quite right. Sometimes the kind of wrongness is what makes these things work. So it's not always worth spending hours kind of um, laboring over getting these things absolutely perfect. One of the things that I tend to like about these kind of pads, especially when they're built up from multiple elements that have come from different places, you know, some of them sampled from records, some of them from sample packs, they're always going to be a little bit out of tune. Um, and things like, is that this one? that sounds kind of rubbish at the moment. Or well, especially rubbish because it kicks in halfway through. Um, but one of the things I like about that kind of element is that it adds a bit of randomness to the part. And also with it kind of speeding up as it moves up and down, that adds to the kind of, that really gives it the, the sampled feel. Um, so working through, generally with these kinds of elements, I'll get rid of everything that you don't need from the sound and focus on what I do want. So with a lot of these, that'll be getting rid of the low end, focusing on the high end. And then there's the one at the bottom, number five, that's got all the low end information. You can see it on the, um, on the spectrum on the EQ here. So the way I'm going to do this is send uh, the vocal out of uh, the second output from my sound card um, into the mixer. I then have um, 
the Space Echo attached as an auxiliary send from the mixer. Um, basically, it's a, it's a pre-fade send, um, which means that even if the, the fader levels are down at, at nothing, um, the signal will still come through to the effect. Um, and the reason I do that rather than kind of connecting it directly to the effect is so that I can connect other things in the studio to the space echo. Um, otherwise, I guess I could just hardwire the output, the second output, into the space echo. The signal will go into the space echo, then come back into this mixer, completely wet. The mixer is then connected to the inputs on my prism uh, interface. Uh, and then it'll get recorded back into Cubase. So it's a bit of a long-winded way to do what you could do with um, a single plugin, but hopefully you'll hear that the, um, the Space Echo adds its own kind of character to the sound. So rather than just having kind of blanket delay over all this vocal, I'm going to pick out individual words um, and put automation um, in to basically trigger the effect send that goes off to the Space Echo. So Pick out the words. Way back in the warehouse days of glory, 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 glory. We used to party till the break of dawn. dawn, dawn. Those happy days still remain in my mind. So I'll get one on mind as well. In my mind. It's not quite right. In my mind, my, 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 So what I'm going to do now is record that in. Um, but I'm going to control the, um, the intensity on the space echo. So what you'll see is as the intensity goes up, um, it starts to really kind of feedback, um, overdrive, saturation, all that kind of good tape stuff. Um, I'm also going to turn down on here the bass, so we've got a tone control, bass and treble. Leave the treble turned up, turn the bass down a bit um, and see how that works. Whoops. Let's try again. Way back in the warehouse days of glory, 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 glory. we used to party till the break of dawn. dawn. Um, and the bass I used on this is, uh, is pretty simple, to be honest. Um, it's just an 808 kick, which I need to get into tune. Um, so that's proper pitch. It's just a bit flat. Okay.
So, it's as easy as that. Um, it's a fairly straightforward bass line, but um, given that it, there's kind of lots of elements of this tune that are quite jungly, um, it made sense for it to be an 808 kick um, and for it to be a fairly repetitive, um, fairly simple bass line. So I'm just going to quantize that because it will be wonky. That will work. Um, so that's really just kind of dropped in with no processing really, it's just kind of tuned. I'm gonna, is that timing off? That sounded a little, a little bit off. No, it's right. Um, I'm gonna, Low pass that a little bit. So I'm just going to drop in one more break. It's a, an old break from a jungle sample pack. So roll off the low end, give the top end a boost. It's got nice rides on it. We're still getting the kick through because that's going through on a separate channel. But if I solo it, There we go, and then copy that to track. Quantize. Okay. Um, so the next thing is kind of looking at the arrangement, um, the tune drops, I've high passed this out, but I have a feeling that actually it should stay in on the drop, but filtered up a bit. So I'm just going to roll the low end off, so that's my... High pass filter automation. Let's keep that. Those happy days in my mind. Those happy days. in the mix to get that balance right. And 
then we'll pull the, uh, the pads out at that point. And use the vocal at that point to kind of, to carry the arrangement. 